Welcome to Mill Spouse Matters, the podcast dedicated to encouraging military spouses. I'm Jen McDonald, and I was a military spouse for nearly 30 years until my husband's retirement. I'm also now the mom of an active duty son, a longtime writer for the military spouse world, and the author of the book, You Are Not Alone, Encouragement for the Heart of a Military Spouse. I created this podcast to bring you inspiration as you navigate your own military life, which can be amazing while also challenging. Whether you're dealing with a move, deployment, raising military kids, keeping your military marriage strong, or employment issues, we're going to talk about it. Military spouses, we're only stronger together. My goal is to bring you realistic hope and support for your own mill spouse journey. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 43. This is Jen, and I am so thankful that you're listening today, whether you're a first-time listener or you've been around for a while. Thanks for joining me. Today, we are talking about relocation and house hunting after PCS, and Sharon Gran from Military by Owner will be joining me with some expert tips I've been working for Military by Owner for over five years now as their content editor for all the resources, blogs, and articles they provide for military families, and I just knew how much they love and support the military community, and I knew she'd just be a great fit to share her expertise on military relocation. I'm also going to share a few thoughts about living in military housing and making that decision, but before we get to that, a couple things. As always, I just want to say thank you for listening, for all your support and notes for over the past almost two years of this podcast. It's hard to believe coming up in August, it will be two years since I launched and I did begin with a weekly show and have moved to biweekly. Um, I will be taking a break uh, probably July and part of August and then coming back in the fall with lots of new topics and still kind of trying to decide the frequency, I hear a lot from people that they wish it came out more often. So we'll see. <laughs> it's a work in progress. And I just want to say thank you so much for listening, because you are why I do what I do. I saw a saying the other day, and I'm sure you've seen it too. And it, it says, be the person that you wish was there for you when you were younger. And that's really what I try to do with all of all the content I create is thinking of you as a younger military spouse, or even somewhere along your journey and just wishing, you know, thinking about what I wish I had had at that point. And I just really do love the military spouse community. Remember to connect with me on Instagram as at Mill Spouse Matters. You can find giveaways, extra resources. We're always sharing something new. In fact, I believe there is going to be a giveaway going on when this airs. So run over and check that out. You can find a free deployment devotional at millspousematters.com, as well as anything I mention in the show notes and the complete show archive where you can listen to every past episode. And if you love the show, please subscribe and share it with someone else. And if you leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, I will give you a shout out on the show. Make sure to go to Facebook and check out the Christian Military Spouses Facebook group if you're interested in that. And do know that you need to answer several questions before you're allowed to join, just so we can make sure that it's military spouses. And that's been a really nice group of support. And we're doing a Facebook Live most weeks. Sarah Gates from Servant Mama and I are co-moderators of that group. And we're just trying to provide you some encouragement every week and things to think about. So what is coming up? This will be the last regular episode. I am planning a bonus episode to follow up on the episode, oh, sorry, I don't remember the number, I think 41, where we talked about the difficult conversations and being an ally to the Black community. And I will have a special guest to just come on and talk about where do we go from here. And I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. So follow Instagram or Facebook, Mill Spouse Matters, and you can stay updated on when that's coming, because I think that would be a really good discussion. So next season, I'm already putting together some topics for the fall But if you have a topic that you really want to know more about or could use some support, I have listeners that have shared with me ideas and I've used them. I'll also be doing some polls on Instagram and other places. So take a look at those and and really do give me your input of I want to make sure that this podcast is helpful to you in your real life. 
Last week, we talked about PCS resources, and it was a pretty long episode, and I hope that you will go and listen to that one. As well, we've taken some of the topics, mostly links and just ideas, and created a download, and you can find that at jenmcdonald.net slash PCS resources, resources for moving overseas, moving with pets, moving with kids, just general PCS resources, acronyms, lots of good stuff. That is a chock full episode. And then we've taken all of the links and put them together real easy for you to just download. So jenmcdonald.net slash PCS resources. So before I get to the talk with Sharon Grand from Military by Owner, I wanted to talk just a moment about living in military housing. If you've never lived in military housing before, I hadn't ever really been around the military before we lived in base housing, and I kind of wasn't sure what to expect. So we're going to talk about that for just a minute. But also, I think the interesting thing about military housing, it can be such a mixed bag. Is you, If you've been in any time, you know it can be really great or it can be really not great. And it can get to the point where it can feel like very familiar if you live in housing in several different places. I know it did for my kids. One thing about military housing is sometimes you come into a base, it could be because it's of its location overseas or because of your the military member's job where they are required to live on base. And so the choice is just taken out of your hands. So sometimes it's easier to have a restricted housing choice before a PCS because the decision is made for you. You don't have to think about the benefits or drawbacks. But most of the time, the option does exist even if there's a waiting list. So we're going to talk about just a couple of reasons of what is your why for living on base. And again, point you to some really good resources to help you think through the decision and maybe give you some tips for living in military housing. We lived in housing probably, I think, for the last 12 years of my husband's 31-year career because we were back and forth overseas. and, And then we just, it was familiar and comfortable to the point of we lived at one base where we could have lived off base and a really beautiful house. I still remember that house. We still talk about it. It was it was a beautiful house off base we'd found as a rental. And my kids wanted to live on base. And the base housing there was so small. And I was like, come on, guys, look, look at all this room. And to the point I had a kid sitting on the steps crying, saying, I just want to live on base. How will I get to the shop ed and the library? And I think that becomes so familiar to them. And you know, you kind of just stop and go, all right, that is sort of like their hometown, isn't it? Because Having the community center, having the youth center, having the shop at, having, you know, the library and all the things that are walkable or or close by, that becomes familiar to military kids. So we did end up living on base there. So I'm going to point you to a few articles about living in military housing and making the decision and just talk about a couple of points real quick. So the first one would be from Military by Owner, who are the military relocation experts. They have so much good stuff. And I know this because (laughs) I help put it together and I know how much work goes into it. And our team of writers just does an amazing job of covering so many aspects of military moves. So one of them is living in military housing, what you need to know. So This really does break down. If you are thinking about living on base, why you would want to weigh the pros and cons. Um, Like I mentioned, some military members won't have a choice. And so that makes it really easy. A lot of factors can weigh in, such as budget, school access, safety, community. And then there's other things to think about too, like there are pet restrictions in military housing and what is available to you. So you want to make a list of your must-haves to help guide you to whether or not living on base would be a good choice for you. Cost savings, just sitting down with the pen and paper and thinking about costs, living on base, living off base, it can be very obvious which way to go. Realize that most housing companies take exactly what you earn for BAH, which can be hard to swallow if your spouse gets a promotion and you don't have an upgraded home. So that's something to think about too. Sometimes you can save money living off base because the rental homes will be lower than your BAH. It's also possible to save money on utilities So it's just no system is perfect and every housing company will handle utility payments differently. Think about the size and condition of the military housing. Is it a good fit for your family? Is there an option to get bigger home if your family expands? What are the school choices on or near the military housing? Are the kids going to school on base or post? Are they, you know, bust off base? What what is the school district like? Some people have some issues with privacy concerns. Usually if you're going to live in base housing, 
you know, you're sharing a wall often because you are in a duplex or your yard. And privacy can be a big factor. And sometimes the military member would like to have some distance from their job. If you do have pets, you need to find out before you arrive, what are the pet restrictions? Usually there's a limit on how many, and then even what types of dog breeds. There are many banned dog breeds on base, such as Pit Bull, Stafford, Bull Terriers, Bull Mastiff, Dobermans, and on and on. So you need to check in with that particular military installation. Take a look at the Military by Owner blogs. One is called Which Pets Aren't Allowed in Military Housing and Dog Breed Restrictions for On-Base Military Housing to get more information about that. So on a positive note for military housing, Like I mentioned, if you have kids, they will likely not be bored. There's always something going on with the community. It can feel a lot like Mayberry. And that was one thing I did love about living on base, where it was almost, you know, you're in a basically a gated community. And I think it kind of can harken back to a simpler time where you can, you know, your kids can ride down the street on their bikes and, and run around the neighborhood with kids. You know, it just, it is like a throwback. There's usually a lot of community support for you as a spouse. You bond quickly because you know you're all in the same boat. And I think it can be a really wonderful thing. There's an article on military.com called Seven Things to Consider Before Moving Into Military Housing, which weighs the pros and cons, which that's a good one to go take a look at. Again, everything will be linked. And then I wrote an article called called How to Be a Good Neighbor in Military Housing because as as I've mentioned through the years, uh, you know, it's been on base a lot. And we've had some experiences. We've had some good experiences and we've had some bad, I will say more good than bad. Uh, But I think that there are some tips for being a good neighbor, you know, introducing yourself, respecting each other's privacy. I think sometimes when your yards all run into each other, you can start to feel like, you know, you're just best friends and you're not really, you know, you're just neighbors. I mean, they may turn into your best friend, but just kind of the whole do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you observing quiet hours. Sometimes there's shift workers that are sleeping during the day and just being considerate like you would be and keeping your pets under control, especially if you have a shared yard. And, you know, just remember, you can end up with your neighbor on base can end up being one of your closest friends, which is always a really cool thing. I'm going to point you to another couple of articles. One is called Military Housing Do's and Don'ts. And another one is What is the Future of Military Housing? Because I know if you have been in the military for any length of time, you know that there's been some issues with upkeep, maintenance, and mold issues over the past couple of years, which have, have really been brought to light and being dealt with. So you you need to think about all those things. So military housing do's and don'ts. I'm just going to run through these real quick. Do be a good neighbor, like I mentioned. Do maintain your lawn and keep your quarters reasonably clean. Whether privatized or not, government housing has certain standards you'll be required to maintain. Do take responsibility for your children. Even though it can have that Mayberry vibe and feel safer than a community outside the gate, you need to know the curfews and regulations for how old children need to be before they're left alone at home or even allowed to walk to school without an adult. There's still rules. Do observe quiet hours, like I mentioned. Do enjoy all the small town perks. You will find community pools, libraries, bowling alleys, movie theaters, sometimes splash parks, rec and youth centers are usually right around you. Do realize that if you want distance from your military job, base housing may not be for you. And it's also a good idea, even if you do live on base, engage with the off-base community for a richer experience. And so you can learn more about the area, whether you join a community group or church or volunteer. Don't be alarmed by sounds that will soon become everyday noises like taps, reveille, the national anthem, gunfire from the shooting range, helicopters. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. Military members calling cadence as they run past your home in formation. That used to always wake me up in Hawaii, which, you know, not too bad to live by Pearl Harbor. And then you hear the formation running by. It's kind of cool. Don't leave the base without your military ID. You could find it hard to get back on the gated installation and make sure that it's not about to expire. Don't let your pets roam freely. Observe the leash laws. You actually can get kicked off base if you have too many infractions. And don't get involved in neighborhood squabbles or start drama. It's just not worth it. There are a couple of humorous posts about this. One is called Are You the Bad Neighbor and Annoying Neighbors Strategies from a Seasoned Military Spouse that I'll link to. So much of what creates a great neighborhood situation, whether in military housing or not, is just simple consideration or respect. And I think that 
enjoy the time you have living in military housing. My grown kids still talk about experiences they had in base housing and the memories of our years living there. It really can be an amazing experience. So I would love to hear from you. If you've lived in military housing, what do or don't would you add to the list? And be sure and check out all the resources I mentioned. There is a lot there. So now on to the talk with Sharon, who's going to be sharing so many great resources and tips for house hunting and settling in after your move. As a military spouse, you're used to holding down the fort, juggling kids, school pickups, commissary runs, not to mention constant moves around the world, all while possibly working and trying to have a life of your own. So forget about keeping up with the news and all the changes the military keeps throwing at you, right? Well, what if you could? Hi, I'm Natalie Gross, host of The Spouse Angle, a new podcast breaking down the news for military spouses and their families. As a journalist and an army brat, I've seen firsthand how cutting-edge data and Pentagon policy changes affect more than just service members, but also everyone at home. So I'm here to make life easier for you. With this show, I want to break down the headlines, clear the clutter, and bring you the news that affects you personally. Stories you can listen to on the go that will help you navigate everyday life and keep you informed. In the weeks ahead, we're going to be tackling spouse employment, controversial changes to education benefits, mental health in the military, and more as news breaks. You'll be hearing from subject matter experts as well as military spouses who can speak from their own experiences in your shoes. To get a behind-the-scenes look at upcoming episodes, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spouse Angle Podcast. I'm so excited to get started, and I hope you'll subscribe and come along for the ride. Today, I am talking to Sharon Gran, who's going to be sharing some expert tips for your PCS move. We're talking about house hunting, including house hunting long distance, how to find that just right place for your family after you've moved, home buying as an option for military families, and we're going to hear how she and her husband Dave started their own company 20 years ago with a mission of helping relocating military families. So here's a little bit about Sharon. Sharon Gran is the co-founder and owner of Military by Owner Advertising, a leading real estate advertising website to help military families find, sell, and rent their homes. As a U.S. Marine Corps spouse for 20 years, Sharon understands the needs of a military family relocating. Sharon and her husband, Dave, run the company along with two of their sons, Ryan and Adam, as well as a team of talented people consisting of military spouses, friends, and family. So you can find more about Military by Owner at militarybyowner.com and on social media as at Military by Owner and also on YouTube. And I will link to all those places. So welcome, Sharon. I'm so glad you're joining me today and sharing your expertise. Well, thank you. And thanks for having me on. I'm glad we finally found a time to (laughs) get together. So as mentioned in your bio, you were a Marine Corps spouse for 20 years. So Do you want to talk a little bit, for those that don't know you, a little bit about your background with military life and as a military spouse? You know, we started, uh, our first duty station was at Camp Lejeune. And so we got married right before Dave was moving to Camp Lejeune. And so then I joined him there a few months after that. Yeah, you know, after 20 years of military life and Marine Corps life, I can honestly say it's a a great life. Uh, we We thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think probably, you know, I think the best thing that, um, you know, with military life is you, you can have instantly have friends if you want them. You know, a lot of people (laughs) come in with already a job in their own life and, you know, perhaps somewhat settled and you can maintain that. Mm -hmm. But if you're just getting into military life and, and don't have that, then you're not alone. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I, 
I think that's really unique. You don't really yeah. find that with other jobs or, and it is mm-hmm. a lifestyle. It's not a, a job. <laughs> Yeah, and I miss it. You know, after leaving that life, you you do see that you just can't recreate that so easily. <laughs> right, you can't. I mean, and you know, and I noticed that too when we moved uh, to this to the last place to Northern Virginia, and I felt more in the community, mm-hmm. and I felt less in the military. And so, and at that time, you were still active duty, but it it really makes a difference on the community that you're in as far as. Are you off base or just the place that you're at? Right, right. Yeah. And you guys had one son go into the military. Right, our youngest. He's yeah. in the Navy and he's down at Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah, so I was surprised, you know, when he, he was actually in college. And when he came home for a Christmas break, he said, hey, I think I'm going to go in the military <laughs> And I said, oh, you mean after college? He goes, no, like now. I said, Sounds no. like my son. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the way you do it. <laughs> um, but, you know, you have to do what you do. So it's working for him. Yeah. Well, and yeah. then after all those years in the military, you and Dave founded Military by Owner, which I would call the Military Relocation Experts. So can you share a little bit of the story behind how you all started the company? Yeah, you know, there's really three reasons why we started Military by Owner. And at the time, you know, we didn't really specify all three reasons. But looking back, we had just moved from Germany to Northern Virginia. And at this point, we were, what, uh, 15, 14, 15 years in the military. Mm-hmm. So moved to Northern Virginia, and it was a smooth move. There was nothing wrong with it. Like I mentioned before, you know, we really did, both of us really enjoyed the military lifestyle and our military life. We thought there's got to be a way that we connect military families. And in moving in such a a large populated area and with so many bases in this area, that there was a lot of military. So yet we didn't really know anybody. We really wanted just to connect people. And another thing, too, we wanted to, uh, we're very, both were very interested in real estate. But we wanted to educate people, mainly military and new to the military life or old, but uh, educate people in home buying and home selling. And where that came from is our very first house that we bought when mentioned going to Camp Lejeune for the first time right after we got married. And we did rent for a few months. And then we decided to buy a house. So that Mm -hmm. was our first house together. We um, bought a house. And then what, three years later, we needed to sell the house or decide to rent. We thought, okay, we're going to, we're going to sell the house. (laughs) And, you know, actually, Everybody thinks that they kind of know everything at that time, but looking back, we knew nothing. <laughs> right. right. Uh, so we thought we were going to sell it by ourselves. We know it all. So we're going <laughs> to sell it ourselves. So we put it up for sale by owner, and it was up for sale by owner for not very long, maybe two or three weeks, uh, something like that. And then we got contacted by a real estate agent. And we said, okay, you know, this isn't selling as quickly as we thought we, it would, but uh, well, we went ahead and signed up with a real estate agent. And um, that weekend, I can remember, <laughs> Friday we talked to him, Saturday morning we, con- uh, we signed the paperwork that, uh, yes, he was going to put the house up on the market. And Monday we got a contact for somebody who wanted to buy our house. That's so and, fast. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> So we asked the buyer, well, how did you find out? He goes, oh, we saw your for sale by owner sign, or not sign, but your your ad. Oh. And we said, oh, interesting. Okay. So that whole uh, process there, I think that if we were a little bit more educated about selling a house, about working with real estate agents, about just the whole process, I think that some things would have been a little bit different there. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we... I would have not signed up with a real estate agent. I'm not saying that at all. But I think that, you know, we would have been more educated about about the whole process. Yeah. So that's the education part. And and plus, 
you know, like I mentioned before, we both are very interested in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like that moved back to Northern Virginia. That's when I actually got my real estate license. And mm -hmm. I love looking at homes. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I think, you know, you touched on the by owner part and I, I, I probably should have said it's at the beginning. I was trying to figure out a way to word it because I've worked with the military by owner for five years now doing content. So I work with Sharon on a regular basis, work for them. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the education pieces is the site is not just for those selling by owner. It's for anybody putting their home on the market or for rent. So I don't know if you exactly. wanted to talk about that at all or, you know. Well, we have so many resources on the site. If you are a real estate agent working with military home buyers, that's on mm -hmm. the site. If you are um, a home buyer, first time home buyer, we have an ebook talking about buying your first home. So I, I feel that we, and you know, we're always, as you know, we're always expanding <laughs> those resources. <laughs> um, like, oh, another ebook. Oh. <laughs> uh, but we're always oh, I, expanding those. And, and uh, so we have a lot out there to help yeah. educate the people. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Well, and speaking of education, as we're recording this, we're kind of in yeah. that limbo <laughs> phase after the stop movement and delays with moves and people not knowing whether they're going to be moving this summer or maybe they were going to. And now they, you know, it's just picked back up again. So with all of that going on, I, I think a lot of military families are house hunting long distance. So you are the perfect person to give <laughs> some tips or advice about house hunting long distance. You know, that's not, if, if you're going to actually purchase a house long distance, I think we all agree that that's probably not ideal. Right. Uh, obviously though, that you do uh, start your house hunting uh, before you actually move and you do that online. But you want to kind of get a feel first, I think, for the area and to do that. And I think probably a lot of people do this anyway and don't realize mm -hmm. it. But let's say you're moving to Fort Carson or any base. You're going to look up Fort Carson. You're going to look at all the spouse groups or the spouse group page and communities mm -hmm. in Fort Carson. Um, you're going to be looking at, you know, whether it's Pinterest, Facebook, any social, anything you can find about Fort Cal Carson. Basically, you're just going to feel like you're going, you're good there. You know, you know what mm -hmm. area you want to be in, what neighborhood you want to be in, uh, what schools you want your kids to attend. And I think that's really important. I think as military spouses, I think we're really good at this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're really good at researching. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we research it to death, but we, I think we're really good at it. And there's so uh, many resources now. I, I tease the younger spouses about, you know, back in the day, we used to have to go to the base library and hope they had a video <laughs> on the base you were going to. And that's all you got. And they're looking at me like, what's a video? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that's so much easier these days. That was a very uh, old person comment. <laughs> yeah. You know, there really are so yeah. many ways to find out about where you're going, what the area is going to be like. Right. And, you know, too, uh, I, when you do your research on yourself and you get into these groups, but also if you're looking to buy or if you're looking to rent, uh, hire a real estate agent. See if you connect with them. Let them be your eyes on the other side. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, there's so many different groups that work specifically with military. I mean, we have a lot of agents that advertise on our site that enjoy or who are spouses or veterans themselves and right. like working with military uh, members. There's Mill Housing Network. Karina and Lindsay do a wonderful job with, you know, connecting people to real estate agents across the mm -hmm. country. So uh, use the resources that's out there because there's so many. There are so many. Yeah. Yeah. Come to Military Bound first, though. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. But, but you know, too, if, with the house hunting, if, uh, if at all possible – Still go ahead and plan, even during this crazy time of uh, COVID, but still plan a house hunting trip. It, you know, maybe that would be just one person. You know, maybe that's just the spouse or the military member. Maybe it's just one person going on that house hunting trip. 
Mm-hmm. But I would still kind of plan a house hunting trip because you just you just get a feel for it, the area better, if at all right. possible. Maybe that's not possible. And I, I think we did it least... one time. I think we did really? that one time in all the years. Yes, and yeah. it just was like with the TDY. He went and and scoped it out. But yeah, especially yeah. right now, I feel like it's a little difficult. But I agree. If you it can, is. it does make a difference to see it in person. It does. It does, and and. Some of the time during our years, we, uh, you know, we lived on base and, uh, you know, we didn't house hunt during those times, but right. a couple of times we did a house hunting trip and it just, it just makes a big difference. But two, another thing in that pre-planning stage, while we're kind of in limbo, you know, go ahead and get pre-approved. If you're going to buy a house, get right. pre-approved, have all that ready. I do firmly believe that at the end of this, whether that's the end of June, 1st of July, uh, whenever we can freely and safely move about, Mm -hmm. uh, I think things will be happening pretty quickly. I think most places will try to get schools in session in August if that's the time that they normally go back. And so I think things will be moving pretty quickly. I think so too. There's so many places too that you can go ahead and just get pre-approved, you know, whether you're using a VA loan or a conventional loan, you know, check that out. And you have uh, that on the site. Right, like link right. To- there is okay. a link to Veterans United. Another good uh, source is uh, American Mortgage Network. Uh, they're good to work with. And, uh, you know, and there's other companies too. You can go ahead and do some of the online, not physical, but it is nice to talk to a particular person. And if you have questions, uh, to be able to talk to a person rather than doing everything online. And I don't mean like face to face, but I mean to be assigned to a person. Right. And so you can find out more uh, at Military by Owners site. There's links to Veterans United and some other places for you to get more information about all of that if if that's something that's new to you. So for people that are renting, especially like a younger family that maybe it's their first move or they're just kind of inexperienced looking for rentals, what advice would you give or like red flags as they're searching for a rental home? Well, you know, and I think this probably is true with renting or buying, but, you know, you want to make sure that you either visit or online, you know, places at all times of the day. You know, if you can check out those places and make sure that you feel safe, look at the recommendations from the landlord or the property manager. Uh, We don't, um, if you can find out that and talk to them on the phone, See if you feel comfortable with them. Mm-hmm. Make sure you read the lease. Not all leases <laughs> are the same. Yeah. Um, and so make sure you read those terms in the lease. And uh, again, like if you can, you know, actually personally visit the area, you know, see what it's like. You know, there was a, this was um, actually when I was a real estate agent, the, <laughs> I was taking the buyers to the neighborhood and, um, there were actually like uh, sheets hanging down on the garage door oh, God. Uh, saying, don't move here. We don't want you here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. Oh my goodness. Is it because so, they were military or? <laughs> uh, they didn't want the old people to leave basically. Oh, okay. So it really had nothing to do with the new people. It <laughs> just had to do with uh, maybe the neighbors being a little set in their ways. <laughs> I don't know. So did they end up moving there or was they that did. a deterrent? No, they did. They moved. Really? There. However, <laughs> however, uh, I think it was about, I don't know, nine months or so that they stayed there and they mm. just obviously never, never felt welcomed. <laughs> I guess it's pretty <laughs> brave to just go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, check the area <laughs> out and so forth. But, you know, renting sometimes has that stigma like, oh, you can't afford to buy a house or, you know, maybe we should be buying. But renting is very smart to do. And there's a lot of different circumstances where maybe you should rent versus buy. Mm. And, right. uh, you know, some of those, you know, whether it's finances, whether it's uh, maybe your spouse is going to be, the military member is going to be gone all the time. So there's a lot of reasons, you know, why renting makes sense sure. for buying. Well, and I think like the whole sight unseen thing, you know, Mm -hmm. we keep talking about if you can make sure and tour it first. I know that one of the blog posts on Military by Owners, she was talking about they did rent a home 
unseen. It was the one and only time they did it because when they arrived, they had been given, I think, a video tour or photos had been sent and it was from the front of the home, but they didn't turn around and show them the street and it was pretty bad. Yeah. And they didn't know, realize it until they moved in and they were kind of stuck. And so, you know, those are things to keep in mind is get the full picture. Right. <laughs> Pictures are so important. And also, um, you know, ask the landlord or the owner to video the home. If you can't be there yourself, ask them to video you can also, like if you go back to those community groups or Facebook groups, ask somebody in that group, you know, to maybe help you out. Yeah, yeah. Well, and kind of touching on home buying, it's a big topic. So mm-hmm. we'll narrow it down just a little for today. So like you were saying, many military families won't do it. You know, renting makes more sense, but sometimes it does make sense to consider. Mm-hmm. So maybe talk about when could home buying be a good option for military families? Uh, Sure. I think that there's, again, like about three things that you should look at. One is the area itself. Does the area, does it look like it's up and coming? Does it look like it's someplace that maybe you will come back to? And, And again, you always have to kind of think about, okay, three years down the road or two or three, four years, you're going to be leaving. And what are you going to do with the house after that? You know, it, is the area a good rental area where you might want to rent your house out? And perhaps you want to rent the house out and then come back to it, you know, 10 years down the road. And, and that would make, you know, good sense, I think, to keep a house there if you like it. Also, if you, does the area have a shortage of rentals? Sometimes if somebody wants to, come into a new area and they want to rent and all they can find, they can't find any rentals. All they can find is homes to buy. Well, thinking about that, if you do end up buying a house, knowing that, okay, I probably can rent this because rentals in this area are hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, look at the area. Another thing to look at is your finances. And, you know, you always want to have, even if you're just getting like a VA loan or having a, a low, I can't talk, no down payment or a low down payment, you still want to make sure that you have a good safety net. And that safety net, you know, could look like six months, you know, can you sustain yourself for six months or a year even? Without that safety net, you probably shouldn't commit to maybe uh, something long term like a home to buy. Right. It's hard to do that. But then also look at the type of house that you're considering. You know, if you're looking at, say, a new construction, like you go back when I was saying that going when we moved to Camp Lejeune and we rented for a year and then we bought a house. Looking back, I guess maybe we did make a lot of mistakes, but we bought a new construction. (laughs) So did did we. (laughs) So, yeah, so we bought a new construction and, you know, we didn't have any problems However, looking back, there's a lot to a new construction. Everything, you know, the shutters, blinds, uh, fencing, you know, so much that you have to buy with the new construction. And that's perfect. You know, you get the house that you like and the colors Mm -hmm. that you like. Just make sure you have that money to to be able to live in the house. So, you know, that's a thought too. But then also... um, Look at your personal circumstances, you know, whether home buying is right for you or or not. Again, I mentioned, you know, if the military member is going to be gone a lot, you know, does it make sense to buy or would it be better to live on base or would it be better to to rent as far as the home maintenance part of it? And think about, too, you know, like if when you are going into that house and your personal circumstances with that pre-approval, did you get pre-approved? on two incomes or one income? Are you going to be able to maintain that second income? You know, owning your own house, I think, is is a really good feeling. But just having it to feel good is not a good reason. <laughs> you know, but it is a good feeling, owning your own house. But that's not the only thing that you should look at. You may need to look at everything. And again, you know, looking back, you know, when we came to Northern Virginia just for a school. So we were only here for nine months during that 20 year part. 
and we think, oh gosh, we should have bought a house then. Because then going yeah. back to it, you know, 15 years right. later, we could have well, had but a how house. Can you know? <laughs> yeah. So you need that crystal ball. I don't know. Well, we but- did come back to where our house was and we kind of lucked out because first of all, we didn't know what we were doing. And my husband's boss was a real estate agent when we were stationed here the first time. And he was the one that sold us our house, which was a new construction house because the base housing <laughs> we were offered was dismal. And I, we had little kids. And anyway, uh-huh. we did buy, buy a new construction house and then moved three years later and could not sell our house because they were building all around it. Well, thank right. goodness the mm-hmm. rental market here is very active because there's so many bases. So we we kept it rented for 20 years. But then we turned around to move back here, which we didn't know we were going to do, but we did end up retiring here. And my husband was kind of like, well, we can move back in that house. And I was like, are you kidding? Me? <laughs> it's too small. <laughs> which sounds really- but it was, it's totally different. We, when we bought it, we had two children and we were young and yeah, <laughs> you just can't know how it's going to play out. And I feel very lucky that in spite of our inexperience, we were able to, to keep it rented out and made some money when we did sell it. Yeah, that's that's really good. I mean, that you were able to keep it rented for that long, and that's um, it's kind of know. miraculous. Well, I don't know. I think. I mean, obviously, that's the way that it should go. It's supposed so to work that way, right? It is exactly, exactly. It's supposed to work that way. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's always nice. And you know, honestly, uh, the stories that I hear, uh, it does work out that way. So, yeah. I don't think anybody should be afraid of that, you know, buying a house now. And then with the idea that you're going to rent it out, I think mm-hmm. most times that does uh, work out. You just have to make sure that you're prepared, you know, we just kind of for, stumbled yeah. into it. <laughs> oh, I think most people do. <laughs> I think that's exactly, you know, but that's okay. That's how people learn, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, for those thinking about homeownership and military life, are there any specific resources you wanted to mention or point people to? Uh, well, you know, obviously, like I mentioned before, we have a lot of you know resources on the site, uh, and there's uh, even more than before. There's lots of resources out there that you can use. Uh, you know, like we mentioned before about Veterans United. Uh, you know, there's sites that you can go in and look at, oh, like reviews uh, for particular neighborhoods and mm-hmm. areas, and even on base reviews. You know, it, what's it what's it like to live on base? That's Military Town Advisor. You know, there's PCS Grades, there's Millie, there's so many other places that so many resources to look. And I do encourage you to look at all of them because everybody has a little bit something different to bring to the table. But, uh, you know, as far as finding a home and uh, selling a home and home buying and home selling and renting and so forth, we have a lot of resources to, to look upon. Yes, for sure. <laughs> as you probably know. <laughs> and more coming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's and a you work know, in too, If you're, uh, new to the military or old either way and i don't like to say use the word old what's the good term seasoned yeah but, and people are pushing back on that one too yeah exactly <laughs> experienced or been around the yeah. block i don't know what's the right term yeah <laughs> but basically too with all these resources that we have we like to get feedback from other people so that we can get firsthand experience into our ebooks or into our resource pages or in our blog post. So Mm -hmm. please contact us if you have an experience. If you have something good to say. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Or have like constructive feedback. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But you know, as far as like somebody new going into the military life or, and new, I would use that term for the first 10 years being new Mm -hmm. to the military life. I think once you get to a place, I, you just jump right in and and join everything that you can and get involved mm-hmm. and join the gyms and get the kids in sports if you have kids and dance, whatever mm-hmm. their thing is. Uh, because really those three years that you're there goes by so fast. Yeah. And yeah. you need to just jump in and for the first six months and just 
get involved with everything and then kind of right. cut back and figure out, okay, this maybe isn't a good fit or I just don't have time to do that anymore. Yeah. And just really, you know, just enjoy the the place that you're at. And yeah, I think the one good thing, you know, is like, if you feel, cause I can mention the three years does go by fast. And at the end of the three years, you're going to say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we came here. And I learned so much about this area. I'd never visited this part of the country before. And I really hate to leave. Or you could go, oh, thank goodness we're leaving, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. Yes, yeah. yes. So, <laughs> you know, so might as well just enjoy the ride. So do you get the itch to move still or do, are you pretty used to it now? Well, yeah, I do. I really <laughs> enjoyed moving. I did. And, yeah. you know, we've been here for a long time and we did change houses, but I find that I'm just kind of collecting a lot of things. I need to pretend like I'm moving so that I can (laughs) clean house a little bit, you know, it's okay to have an empty room or, you know, it's okay. We don't need those boxes. We're coming up to three years, which is hard to believe of Steve's retirement. And it's, it is weird to realize we're not going anywhere. Do you feel (laughs) like you should be leaving? Yeah, a little bit, but I also I'm going, I really probably should take all the curtains down and wash them. <laughs> I think that's the only time that ever happened was when we were moving. I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, people just do that on a regular basis versus because mm-hmm. they're moving. <laughs> what a concept, you know? <laughs> exactly. But it's yeah. nice. It's, you know. I do like being settled. I, I am enjoying that aspect of it too. And I'm going to do a future show about like what, what, how to prepare for life after the military. Uh-huh. So that'll be, that'll be fun to talk about, I think. Well, I think you just have such a positive attitude towards military life. And I hope that listeners kind of pick up on that and, and make the most of it too. Because I, I had heard a spouse say one time, she said, well, you know, it takes two years to really get settled in. And I kind of looked at her I was like, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> you, no. you don't, you have, you have to just jump in. You, you have to, because if you wait that long, you'll finally start making friends and then you're going to, you're going to be moving. So I think that's really good advice. Right. Right. I think that just, yeah, just enjoy it. Take advantage of everything because every duty station has something unique. Starting with our second duty station, which was Virginia beach and ending in to where we are now. So that included, you know, Virginia beach, Quantico, Uh, Camp Pendleton, Stuttgart, Germany, Northern Virginia. We ended up moving with one or two couples at about the same time. Yeah. So, you know, if you're brand new and you're at this duty station, chances are you're going to come back and see some of those same people almost every place you go. And so you're not completely alone at every place. And, And the longer you stay in, the smaller it gets. Oh, exactly. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You're like, wait, I know you. Are these all the same people that were my last mates? (laughs) Where are we at? (laughs) Well, I still have the same Bunko Club. I'm not in it anymore. Well, everybody kind of moved away. But from Camp Pendleton, we lived on base. And in our, and the street that I lived on was a circle. And everybody in that circle, we were in a Bunko group. Okay, uh-huh. so then, um, see, what was it? Ten years later, when I moved here, it was the exact same Bunko group. <laughs> That's so funny. It does turn out that way sometimes, though. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, yeah. As we as we get to closing, was there anything else you wanted to add to any of the tips you gave about house hunting or home buying or renting? I know that's just a lot. (laughs) It's a big topic, but. Right. It's a wide uh, variety. You know, just uh, one thing I do want to kind of say is that if you have questions about any of the home buying, renting, should I do this or should I do that? Call us here at Military by Owner because most of the people that do work, who's going to be answering the phones or who's going to be answering the chat online or writing the blog post or whatever, our military spouses. So mm-hmm. more than likely somebody ha- is, has lived where you're going to or has bought a house or sold a house. And again, just use those resources that you have available. And the people that do work with a set military by owner have been, have been in your shoes. 
you know, mm-hmm. might have been a few years ago. It might have been, you know, just last year. But uh, that's pretty nice to be able to just call somebody and say, hey, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, what did you yeah, do you, in this circumstance? Yeah. And you guys are great about that. Just su- continuing to support the military community and giving so much back. So, yes, definitely check them out for sure. Well, thank you, Sharon, for joining me today. I think it well, was really you. good tips and I will link to everything she mentioned. There's lots of ebooks and free resources on military by owner site, as she mentioned. And also one thing we didn't talk about was all the base regional guides. So it, there's not one for every single base yet, but we're getting there. As far as if you're moving to a specific location, go check and see if there might be a guide for where you're going. Like I know like Fort Hood or Camp Lejeune, places like that, we do have guides for those kind of bigger mm-hmm. bases and they're free. Exactly. Right. Can't beat that. Can't beat no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> lots of good info. Yeah. Yeah. So just a reminder, you can find military by owner at military by owner.com and on social media as, as at military by owner. So thank you, Sharon, for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. And thanks, you guys, for listening. And I hope you have a great week wherever in the world this finds you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Mill Spouse Matters podcast. Connect with me at millspousematters.com or on social media as at millspousematters. You can find my book, You Are Not Alone, Encouragement for the Heart of a Military Spouse on Amazon and other booksellers. Love the show? Please leave a five-star review in whatever podcast player you're listening and then share it with someone else who could use it too. Until next time, have a great week.